Hello, and welcome to episode four of the Roach Rebuild series. That's right, episode four. It was supposed to be a three episode series, thought it was done. Here we are. Uh, the reason I'm doing a fourth episode is because some stuff has gone wrong. And tonight we're gonna talk about what's gone wrong and what we're gonna do to address it. Um, there have been multiple things that have gone wrong with this PC. Um, I'll show you inside the case in a little bit, but uh, first I just wanna do a little background on what's happened since I built Roach. Roach 3, that is. So, first of all, <clears throat> uh, some of you are probably familiar with this uh, issue with the 7800X 3D that's been in the news lately, uh, where uh, depending on a number of factors, certain channels like Gamers Nexus and uh, Jay's Two Cents and Linus Tech Tips, I could go on, there's a bunch of them in the PC gaming community, that have found out that these chips have a serious flaw in them where if your uh, sock voltage is too high, then they can burn out. And um, not only the sock voltage, there are some other factors that can cause them um, to be severely damaged and in some cases catch fire. Granted, that did not happen to me. At least I don't think it did. But uh, one thing that did happen with motherboard number one, that's right, there's, there's multiple. Motherboard number one had two main problems. First of all, uh, annoying but not critical, the top three USB ports didn't work. The top three and then one on the second row. I bought this motherboard because it has 10 USB ports. I need all 10. Um, so that was a big bummer. But more importantly, the first motherboard actually developed some really weird booting problems. And the code that the code checker was giving me was for CPU pre-initialization. So that was pretty scary. And the computer was, as far as I could tell, toast. I mean, all the usual stuff, resetting the CMOS, trying to flash the BIOS, didn't, uh, didn't take. So I couldn't get it to post after that. So at that point, I threw up my hands and said, all right, well, we got to return it. I returned that one to Newegg, got a refund. At that point, I thought, okay, well, I'm, I'm within the retail return period. I don't have to worry about RMAing it. That's cool. Uh, so I could buy another motherboard of a different brand, or I could just get another one of this one because this is the one that I've identified as the one that's best suited for my needs, has all the stuff I want. And also, I trust Asus because I've used nothing but Asus motherboards in my builds for years, and they're my favorite motherboard manufacturer by far. Let's give them another chance. Well, so I, so anyway, I returned that motherboard. I ended up exchanging it for another identical B650EE. I also returned the CPU. So now I'm on my second motherboard and my second CPU. I don't know if the CPU is at fault, but when you've got a, a code that says CPU pre-initialization, and that's the code you're hanging on. Granted, when I took the CPU out of the socket, the CPU was undamaged. There was no scorch marks, there was no bulge. CPU may have been perfectly fine, but since I was within the retail return period, I didn't want to take that chance. So I returned the CPU as well. So I have a new CPU, new motherboard, swapped them out. That seemed fine. Now this is on top of my RAM problems, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. But CPU and the motherboard, those are the two that are here right now. So those are fine, they're stable at least. And the BIOS updates have since come out uh, fixing that SOC issue. My SOC has been rock solid. I babied it. Uh, I did not enable Expo. I did not do any overclocking. I kept everything 100% stock for the entire period until the BIOS 1616 came out, at which point enough people on the Asus forums were confident that it was good BIOS that I decided to turn on Expo. I haven't really done anything else. I have not turned on Precision Boost Overdrive. I have not messed with anything in Ryzen Master. Uh, it has been running just with Expo turned on like this ever since. That part of it is fine. So now remember, this is motherboard number two, CPU number two, and the USBs still don't work. The top three and one in the second row still do not work. I Two motherboards and they have the exact same USB problem. I can't be the only one. In fact, if you go on the ROG forums, you will find a long support thread that I am talking in with a Asus support person uh, we have been going back and forth for several weeks now, and I'm fed up. I'm, I'm fed up with this. I need my USB ports. Uh, I'm sick of having to plug stuff into the front, and it look, I hate the way this looks. I, I spent $350 on this motherboard. Because it has 10 USB ports, I want all 10. So anyway, what did I do? Well, I bought another motherboard. So that's one of the things we're going to do tonight. Um, I'll show you some of the other changes I've made as well before we do the teardown, but uh, 
bottom line, we're doing a motherboard swap tonight. We're, we're taking Roche apart, putting the new board in, and uh, we're gonna boot her up and see what she what she's got. So let's uh, let's take a look at the motherboard I bought. Okay, I'm about to start the time lapse and start taking the computer apart. Uh, but before I do, I just wanted to call out a few things that you'll notice are different. Um, like I said earlier, I did have some RAM issues. You'll notice that my front 140 mil on the Noctua is gone. That's because these are different DIMMs than I had before, before I had those Corsairs. That uh, I had to return, and this is my bad. I didn't do enough homework. Those Corsairs I thought were on my QVF list. They were not. Um, in fact, no 6600 megahertz kit was on the QVF list for my memory, or for my motherboard, and I... Coming from Intel, I didn't think that was a big deal. You know, I'm used to Intel where, you know, you buy whatever memory kit you want at whatever speed you want, you turn XMP on and you forget about it. Um, unfortunately, with this one, when I when I turned in on those Corsair DIMMs uh, stock, they were fine. But when I turned on the 6600 megahertz Expo, then um, they, they had all kinds of stability issues and were crashing in games every 15 minutes. So I returned that kit and got this G-Skill instead. Um, this is uh, the kit that Phil had, actually, and um, that is actually an Expo-designed kit. So lesson learned uh, with AM5, pay attention to what's Expo-rated. Um, so like I said, that was my fault. Can't blame any company for that. That was my own mistake. Good news is uh, I got a refund on those, um, and I got these uh, slightly cheaper, and um, they're still 6,000 megahertz. Like I said, uh, that's the sweet spot for AM5. So um, these just have the bonus of being RGB. I didn't pick them like that. That's just the ones that they had at the time were RGB. Uh, but as a downside, the dims are a little taller. So anyway, bottom line, that's why the 140 mil fan is gone. Honestly, I have not noticed any significant in increase in temps on my Noctua since I took the fan off. Having it off does not seem to have had any effect. Um, next, you'll notice uh, I haven't taken the cooler off yet, but when I do, you'll notice there's a red AM5 aluminum contact frame in there. Um, I got that because I noticed in, in removing the first CPU that getting thermal paste off of this IHS is a nightmare. In fact, I can't believe AMD designed this IHS the way it did with all the little notches that thermal paste can get gouged in. So um, thermal performance aside, I don't know if it's made a difference. It, it might have. It seems negligible. But I bought it. It just seemed like uh, an easy way to clean off the the IHS because you'll as you'll see uh, when I do the time lapse, having that aluminum shroud around the CPU makes it so that thermal paste can't fall down the cracks and into the little grooves. Makes it a lot easier to clean off. Uh, final thing before we get into the motherboard, you'll notice the Sabrent M2 to PCIe adapter is back, and the reason that it's back is I discovered thanks to one of my commenters, a guy named Phil, not my brother, another Phil. But uh, Phil pointed out that on this motherboard, when you have all four M2 SSDs plugged in, it uh, takes the one that you can't see, the one that's above this slot, the one that's behind the GPU. When you have an M2 in there, it takes half the lanes away from your GPU, which is insane to me, but that's the way it goes. Uh, I looked in the manual, and there actually is a little blurb in the manual where this is spelled out. It was, a, it was not in the M2 section, but it was in there. So uh, that, that's also on me, I guess. But I honestly, this is my first experience dealing with splitting PCIe lanes. Um, when I did, I did some research on how much performance that having that lane split in half comes out to, and it's not nothing. It's you know, it's it's five percent on this game, eight percent in this game, three percent or or even zero in another game. But I mean, I'm I'm using this as a gaming PC, so I I don't want to leave performance like that on the table. So uh, I ended up uh, going with, uh, because this slot, this black one, goes into the chipset instead of into the, you know, the other PCIe lanes shared by the GPU, uh, I have all four drives plugged in and uh, I'm not losing any lanes. So bottom line, that's why the Sabrent is back. One of my Samsungs is in there. But that sucks because I picked out this motherboard for that. So, uh, okay, so what motherboard am I swapping out with? Well, so when... I did the first exchange. Like I said, I thought, you know, let's give Asus another chance. I did some shopping around, and I looked at MSI's offerings. I looked at Gigabytes. And just on a price to... I looked I looked at the other Asus options. I looked at their XX70 options, because this is a B650. Uh, I, I couldn't find anything that had all the USBs, all the M2s, but at the same price as this one. So I was very frustrated. And, and then I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just do another Asus. Let's give them another chance. I probably just got a lemon. Well, of course, obviously, I was incensed when these USB ports didn't work again. So I was shopping around, and, and then I discovered that, you know, I didn't really consider ASRock 
I've never really been an ASRock guy. I've always thought of them as more of just like a budget option. And then I looked, I did a closer look and read some reviews, and then I came across this X670 E Steel Legend. And let's, I mean, let's look at this motherboard. This motherboard has a lot of really cool stuff. First of all, like we've been talking about with the USBs, it's got 11, so I'm actually gaining a USB. It's got dual NIC. I don't particularly care about that, but eventually this will probably be a server board, so that'll sure come in handy at that point. So that's a cool bonus. Uh, I do lose a USB-C, but that's okay. I've got one in the front, and I've got um, I've only I'm only using the one right now anyway, so I don't think that's a big deal. Uh, I lose a little bit of the audio connectivity. It doesn't have the extra audio ports, but I don't use those. I'm using headphones for everything, so that's fine. Um, it still has all four M.2s. It's got the big one here. It's got two under this heat sink, and then it's got one here. Um, these M.2s, I, I looked it up, they, they cannot steal lanes from the GPU. So we, we jumped that problem as well. Um, the other thing is it comes with this really nice anti-sag bracket for your GPU that attaches directly to the motherboard. Do I need that? Not really. I mean, I'm not sagging. You can see I'm not sagging a ton here, but there's a little bit. It could go a little bit, you know, and over time, maybe that'll pay dividends. So I'm kind of excited about that GPU bracket. And that's a cool ad. Um, the only thing I'm really losing is I don't get a pinout code anymore. So there's no, you just get the four diagnostic LEDs there. That's it. So I, I am losing that. That is a feature that I will miss, but I feel like, um, oh, and, and I, I should also point out this motherboard just hit on sale. Uh, when I got it, it was $262 and I think it went up a little bit. It's still 270 but so, so at 262, I mean, I paid 350 for this one, so I'm saving 90 dollars and gaining USBs and gaining uh, CPI or PCIe lanes. So, I mean, I still have a few days on this one, so if I go to plug this one in and it's a complete lemon, I'm okay. I can still go back to the Asus and return this one. But like, uh, but you know, I mean, I've got. I've got till I think June, the we first week of June to return the Asus board. So it's now or never. If, if I don't return it now, then I'm, you know, I'm only dealing with the manufacturer at that point. So now's the time to do it. All right. I've talked enough. Let's get into this motherboard swap.
it is. Windows is installed. I've just gotten basic drivers up and running and uh, we're ready. So I'm um, happy to report I did a test of every single USB port on the back and they all work. So very happy about that. Um, so far, this motherboard hasn't done anything weird. It's pretty nice. All the installs went normal, all the updating the BIOS. In turn, I turned on Expo, made a few slight tweaks in the BIOS, but I didn't do anything crazy. <clears throat> it boots pretty quickly, even with Expo turned on. Pretty happy with the boot times. Uh, I just turned RGB to a single, just my usual red. And I'm really liking this, this RGB effect you get down below. As you can see, uh, I did, uh, as you saw in the time lapse, I did have to make um, some slight adjustments. So this fan has to connect to this header down here now. So I fed that under the GPU. And this fan, which is the daisy chain for these two 140s, there's no case fan header up here. So I ended up putting them in CPU optional. And uh, it's working great so far. Uh, I, I might just leave it on the default fan curve because this is pretty quiet. And uh, I'm kind of happy with that. So uh, we're going to do some benchmarking and some testing. And um, see if the thermals are good. As long as the thermals are good, then uh, I'll probably leave this uh, fan profile how it is. But uh, overall, very happy with my new motherboard. Um, still got to do a lot of game testing. It's getting a little bit late tonight but uh, we'll do that tomorrow and uh, overall uh, big success so hey if you stuck out to watch the whole video appreciate it um, uh, once again if you could hit the like that would mean a lot to me but otherwise uh, I hope you I uh, hope you have a great day and thanks for watching